Hi, this is Mary Hildinger with DWD Technology Group. Thank you for uh, taking time to view this tip that we're going to present today. I'd like to talk about uh, what we can do, how we can make things a little bit easier in Sage 100 when we have a customer and a vendor who might happen to be the same entity or for whom we want to offset outstanding invoices. Um, there's some times that this could be really useful. Um, maybe we've got uh, a lot of activity where we're doing work for a particular customer and that customer also happens to do work for us. And instead of passing cash back and forth, we just want to offset invoices with each other. Or you might use it in a situation where uh, maybe you've got intercompany transactions and you've got two different sets of books that you're keeping. So you might want to have a do to do from and let those um, transactions offset each other without having to transfer cash back and forth between the entities. So let's talk today about how we can make this happen. Sage 100 has a function available in the accounts payable module where we can actually link our customers and our vendors. And in the setup folder of accounts payable, there is the function vendor and customer link maintenance. So if we open this up, we have an opportunity to select a customer and then to assign a vendor to that. So I'm going to go out and uh, take a look here and I'm going to grab my customer, Mr. Smith, and um, I'm going to assign a specific vendor to that and we'll pick Wesson Industrial. So now I've established the link in Sage 100 that says, hey, if I've got invoices uh, for Smith and I've got invoices for Wesson, then I can go ahead and marry those two and not transact cash in order to complete those invoices. We'll go ahead and accept this. How do we make that happen? Well, in the period in processing function for accounts payable, you see some options here, and many of you may have, have looked at these before and said, hey, what is, it, what is this all about? Um, AP from AR clearing selection or AP from AR clearing entry. These are a couple of options that will allow us to uh, select customers and vendors and even potentially select individual invoices that we want to clear out through the activity that's on the other side of the house. In other words, what's in the accounts receivable. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you the options here for the clearing selection. Um, we're gonna actually do the clearing entry because that will give you a little bit more of a visual on what's really happening here. Um, when we get to the clearing selection, uh, we have an option where we can select the uh, select that the AR transfer amount cannot exceed the AP balance due. That means that when I pick a customer and it has a linked vendor, then rather than um, taking more away from the customer side than what is available in the payable side, we're opting not to let that happen. Um, if I've got vendor invoices that are on hold, I could potentially use those to offset against my customers' invoices. The one thing with this particular option is that this will take the oldest invoices on both the vendor side and on the, the uh, customer side, rather than giving us the opportunity to pick and choose which invoices we might want to offset. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I would go ahead and click proceed, the system will go out, it will look for all of my customers and vendors who are linked, and then it will look at all of the open invoice balances and will identify which ones we're going to be able to pick and choose, and, and it will just make the application to those oldest um, transactions first. If I don't want to do that, if I would rather be more picky as far as which invoices I want to clear on the AR side, I can use the AP from AR clearing entry function and I can do um, kind of the same thing, except rather than taking oldest invoices first, I can pick and choose which invoices I want to apply. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, identify my customer and 
when as soon as I do that, I see that I have an AP balance of $357. I happen to have an AR balance of $1,000. So in order for this to all fulfill, I would be able to consume $357 and apply it to this open AR invoice. And I can either use the multi invoice select or I can pick these line by line and just go ahead and grab which invoice or invoices I might want, especially if I want to apply partial amounts. Um, maybe I want, you know, maybe this customer has three or four different invoices and I want to uh, apply just parts of the AP balance to each of the individual invoices. In my case here this morning, I have one invoice. I'll go ahead and select it. <clears throat> excuse me, I have the option to post the entire amount here. And if I do that, you'll see that I would leave a credit balance on the AP side. Well, but I would go ahead and clear the entire AR balance. Um, that may or may not be the way I want this to happen. So what I can do then instead is to go ahead and identify how much of AP I want to apply and I can still leave an open AR balance. So as you can see here, the vendor balance will be zeroed out. The customer balance will be reduced by the amount of the vendor invoice and this is the total amount that is being cleared. I can go ahead and accept this and then I can just go ahead and post this. Again, just like all other data entry that we do that has to deal with uh, monetary transactions, I am going to go ahead and process the posting function. Get a couple of things closed here. Run my register. Go ahead and put my transaction date. This might be something you consider to run at month end uh, just to get things cleared out each month, or you can run it at any time during the, the course of the month. So what we see here in our clearing register, uh, we have a customer, we have a vendor, and we can see the customer's invoice, and then we see a transaction called ARM, and that basically is the indicator for our transaction uh, kind of like a pseudo invoice number or a pseudo, pseudo credit memo number that will tell us that we're going to apply this specific amount to that invoice and what's going to happen with AR and AP. I'm going to credit and debit, I'm going to credit AR and debit AP and I'll see that I have an invoice balance on the customer side left of $643. So we'll go ahead and review that report, make sure that it's okay. And presuming that it's okay, we can see the general ledger effect. And you notice I'm not affecting cash at all. I am simply affecting receivables and payables. Go ahead and walk through that. We get the prompt, do you want to update the clearing register? Yes, I do. And of course, because there is a general ledger effect and, and the system tends to prompt to run the daily transaction register, we'll go ahead and process that. And again, we'll see the formal journal entry that occurs. CC, that's the, the customer clearing or, or um, the receivables clearing. That's a source journal that gets created by the software if that has not been used before. And we'll see the AR and the AP effects on the general ledger. And with that, we'll go ahead and, and update that. And we can now go back into our customer. Go ahead and pull up Mr. Smith here and take a look at the invoices and we will see now that we have a balance of 643 and the transaction that occurred is this payment transaction with a payment reference called clearing 
and that's the indication in the system that this was selected for the AR from AP clearing and that that has reduced the balance of this particular invoice. Now on the vendor side, slightly different, what we see is actually a form of a credit memo, which we would then have to apply to this invoice to actually zero out the balance. In reality, we have no balance due, but like other credit memo transactions, uh, we can use the manual check entry feature to be able to offset the physical credit with the physical invoice. So that's how we can apply customer invoices to vendor invoices without having to affect cash transactions. Again, I appreciate your time uh, viewing this video, and if you have questions, please feel free to contact us, uh, the DWD Technology Group.